when we think of the word temptation or tempt, we're mainly speaking of to make an, an experience of, to search into. Uh, one of my favorite definitions is to try intentionally. Temptation is generally our thoughts, right? So Satan would put thoughts in our minds, suggestions in our minds, right? And as he, Jesus went through this process, right, there were these thoughts that he had. Just like how Jesus was tempted, you know, we are tempted on a daily basis. I know that everything that Jesus went through on this earth, I feel like it was a display for what we as human beings, especially human beings in the kingdom, uh, will and, and could go through in life. When it comes to temptation, we have to be conscious of what we are constantly doing and being offered and the thoughts that, that come creep into our mind. All right, what's up, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the new episode of the Miles Hyde Podcast. This is Miles Jr. I'm your host. And as always, the vision and goal of this podcast is to entertain, educate, and elevate you miles high above your fears, your doubts, and any limitations that you may think exist, always knowing that those limitations only exist in your mind, all right? Uh, so I wanted to have a, a, pretty cool, a, a pretty cool conversation today. So there's a lot going on in the world, um, and... With all of the, the, the stuff going on, it, it reminded me of, or it's reminding me of the fact of how we all want to be successful, right? We all want to be uh, successful in everything that we do, successful in life, whether it's on our jobs, whether it's with things that we uh, endeavor to do, ventures that we, uh, that we put ourselves on a journey on, um, and with this success or with seeking success, you know, there are a lot of tests that we go through, a lot of things that we are tested with um, to see, uh, you know, how true we are to wanting something holistically, right? Not just for, for things, not just for self, but really after either bettering the community around us or serving the community around us. Um, and that brings me to, I, I want to talk about the temptations that we have to navigate in life. Um, you know, when we think of the word temptation or tempt, right, we're, we're mainly speaking of uh, to make an, an experience of, uh, to, to search into. Uh, one of my favorite uh, definitions is to try intentionally. Right. So you're intentionally trying someone. Right. You know, and people say, hey, don't try me. <laughs> that's that's essentially what is happening when we are tempted. It's, it's trying us. Right. Um, and it's also testing for strength and weaknesses. You know, back in the day when you had the 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 swordsmith who would 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 make the swords for the men to fight in battle. And I'm sure that happens uh, even today. Right. When they're when they're making swords or knives or whatever um the steel that they're making the sword or a knife with is tempted right they they go through the go through a process of tempting and the tempting process essentially tests the steel for weaknesses making sure that uh you know once it's heated and beaten and then cooled off like the steel is firm it's not going to break uh it, it's going to serve its purpose in uh, you know, the user, the soldier, you know, whoever's using that particular sword or, or knife uh, in for whatever reason that they're using it, right? So it's tempted. It's, it's, it's consistently tempted, consistently heated, consistently beaten, uh, and then consistently cooled off to ensure that once the process is complete, uh, you have a product that, that you can swear by. Um, and and that's, that's the process that we go through as, as human beings, right? We are, we are consistently tempted, you know, and, and I think uh, the, the, a good example of this would, would be Jesus himself, right? Jesus was tempted. Jesus 
uh, was the most perfect human being, the most perfect individual to ever grace this earth, but still he was tempted. You know, it shows the integrity that God had, right? Knowing that his, his son, who was Jesus, was, was sent to this earth, but he still had to go through the human process, right? The human process of, of being appointed as the, the son of God officially, right? He uh, was baptized. Um, uh, God declared him, you know, he was his son. And then he went into the wilderness to, to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. And, and through that process, or more to, to the end of that fasting period, um, he was tempted. You know, Satan came to him and, and, and tempted him. Uh, because God doesn't tempt us, right? God isn't a person or isn't a, uh, isn't a creator that tempts his creation, right? God is all-knowing, and he, he understands who we are as individuals. But it's Satan who, who doesn't know, right? It's Satan who doesn't isn't all knowing right that doesn't isn't aware of who we are as individuals but he can only try to assume like he can get over on us right he can get the best of us uh so you know satan is the person he, he is known as the tempter right and he can't make us do anything right he, he can't force us to uh into any decision or into any uh into anything that we we don't want to do right he has no power over us we have all of the power but satan can suggest he can make suggestions and i i think uh when when we really think about it uh, going back to to jesus and and the the temptation that he, that he had to 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 go through uh a lot of the th- a lot of the, th- the times we when we read that story i think it's it's almost assumed that satan was there physically with jesus Right, and he was there in front of him, speaking directly to him face to face through that temptation process. Um, but you know, it, it's that, that's not how temptation happens, right? Temptation is generally our thoughts, right? So Satan would put thoughts in our minds, suggestions in our minds, right? And as he Jesus went through this process, right, there were these thoughts that he had, you know, let me. You know, I've just done this this 40 day and 40 night fast. I am famished right now. I'm super hungry. You know, I could turn these stones into bread for me to eat. You know, that's a that's a tempting t- a tempting th- thought because you're you're at your lowest uh, moment in, from a physical standpoint, right? You're 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 super hungry, and you know you 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 know that you can do what it is that you're thinking that you you want to do, right? And and I think that's. That's where the temptation lies. It, it lies when you know you could make this decision, right? You know you could make this decision. You know this decision probably won't be seen or heard from from anyone, you know, because there's really no one around. Um, but you know, it's 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 what you it's it's the decisions that you make in those moments. Um, and Satan, you know, he only could make suggestions, right? And as as we're tempted, and you know, Jesus went through this temptation process. There were three, you know, he was tempted three times. So there's, there, there's three, just like Jesus, there's three types of temptations, right? Or three categories of temptation um, that we go through, that we all go through, that we all experience on a continuous basis, right? I think each of us have our vices, right? We have things that, that trigger us. We have things that, uh, that we fall short on. Um, and I think as we go through life and makes makes these make these decisions satan is aware of these right and he knows how to get us right for for some of us it's it's sex for some so for some of us it's money for some of us it's gluttony for some of us it's it's all of these things that uh, cause us to fall short um and generally speaking like those are the things that we are tempted with and, and when i talk about three things or three categories that we normally are tempted in or three categories that satan uses um to tempt us or to make suggestions to us uh it we, we can find it actually in the good book as always right uh, i want to read first john chapter 2 uh, verse 15 right it says do not love the world or anything in the world if anyone loves the world love of the father is not in him <clears throat> for everything in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life comes not from the father but from the world the world and its desires pass away but whoever does the will of god lives forever 
so in this passage, I, I want to point out three things, right? It says, for everything in the world, and then it lists three things that are in the world, right? The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life. And I think these, these are the three areas that we are tempted in the most, right? When we, when we talk about the loss of the flesh, we're talking about appetite, right? Our appetite, our sexual appetite, our, our money appetite. You know, it, it's about self-gratification. Uh, and, you know, I, I think as we progress in life, uh, especially as men and, and women too, women as well, right? But men, for the most part, you know, our sexual appetite almost guides us through, through life, right? As, as we grow up <clears throat> as young men, you know, we go through this pro the process of puberty and then we start being attracted to females. And for the most part, like it's crazy that most of our decisions as men are geared towards women, right? It's geared towards impressing women, uh, being able to attract women to us. Um, so our sexual desires are really heightened as men. And a lot of the times, that's what we are most tempted with, right? And, and that comes from the lust of the flesh. And then the second one is uh, the lust of the eye, right? And when we talk about the lust of the eye, we're talking about craving what you see, right? Or, or coveting, right? Coveting things. Uh, that's one of the Ten Commandments, right? It, it says, thou shalt not covet. And it's, it's how serious God takes this, this aspect of, of humans. You know, we, we see all of these things. We, we see all of these tangible things that we want to attain, right? We look at people and we see the way that they're living. And we want those things, right? So we're tempted to, to do things to, to, to attain those, those items. Um, you know, whether it's you know, being offered... Uh, or having the opportunity to steal money or being offered money in a not so good way where we're able in our minds we're saying okay if I get this money I can attain this or get this or build this house or get this car or buy these you know whatever item it whatever that item is um but it's the loss of the eyes that we're we're dealing with dealing with at that point and then it's it's the pride of life and this deals mainly with, you know, boasting of what you're doing or what you're about to do or what, you're, what you have done. You know, the first two, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, like, I, I think those are a lot more uh, recognizable, right, than uh, the pride of life. Because uh, sometimes, like, you know, we get successful, we, we attain a certain level of success, and we don't even realize sometimes when we're boasting about it, right? When we're being proud about uh, the achievements that, that we have. And that can definitely be seen as, or that definitely is, you know, one of the categories that we're tempted in. <clears throat> you know, we, we hear people say a lot of the times, you know, I, I made it from nothing, right? I, 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 I from rags to riches, and I, I, did it, I did it on my own. I'm a self-made millionaire. I'm a self-made entrepreneur. I'm a self-made business owner. <clears throat> and we start to think like, man, this is about me. This is all done by me, by myself. And, you know, it's a temptation of thinking that, man, I have done this. I've done all of this myself. I, I am the person that is achieving all of this, right? And we, we forget, you know, we forget that God has blessed us with the talents. God has blessed us with individuals around us. He's provided us with all of these blessings that we're able to that, that work together for us to, to be successful in life. Um, so the pride of life is, is one of those that, you know, we don't really recognize, um, but it's something that is uh, uh, an important thing that we have to be conscious of, right? So when you go back to, the, to Jesus' temptation, right, you think of the lust of the flesh, right? And that's where Satan told him to uh, turn the stones into bread because he was hungry, right? He, he wanted that gratification of his flesh. You know, my body is hungry. I want to feed my body. You know, that's, 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 a temp, that's tempting at that time, right? When we talk about lust of the eye, you know, we uh, see where Satan shows him the line and tells him, you know, I'll give you all of this line uh, as far as you can see. And it's crazy that Satan would tell God that, right? But you know, that's what it was. That's, that's a part of uh, the category that, that Satan tempts in. And then it's the pride of life, right? Where he told Jesus to throw himself off, off uh, this building. And, you know, Jesus will, I mean, God will send his angels down to, 
to stop him from harming himself because he was proud, right? I, I have these these individuals or these person, these these beings that look out for me, right? And I can do whatever I want because I, I can't be hurt. Uh, and that's the pride of life, right? Because Satan, Satan in, in turn was just trying to show or tell Jesus, look, you can display or put yourself on display for these individuals to, you know, advance your career in a sense. Um, and I, I think just like how Jesus was tempted, you know, we are tempted on a daily basis. You know, I, I, th- I, th- I think, not, not think, I know that everything that Jesus went through on this earth, I feel like it was a display for what we as human beings, especially human beings in the kingdom, uh, will, will and, and could go through in life, right? The temptations that he received, the persecution that he received, uh, even the successes that he received and the way he, he received them, the things that he, he did, the principles that he used, all of that was examples for us to follow. Um, so, you know, I, I think when it comes to temptation, we have to be conscious of what we are constantly doing and being offered and the thoughts that, that come creep into our mind. Uh, you know, if we, we could look at other examples of, of temptation, right, with Adam and Eve. You know, they were tempted with the fruit and the tempted, they, they were tempted not only with uh, lust of the flesh, but they were tempted with uh, the pride of life, right? You know, Satan told Eve, "Man, God knows everything. Why don't he? he why doesn't he let you know everything? Right? You eat this fruit, and you will be as wise as God." Um, Joseph was tempted uh, with uh, with sex, with, with, with you know, with the the story of him uh, having to leave his his coat coat of many colors behind. Uh, then we have David with Bathsheba, um, again, lust of the flesh. Uh, and, you know, we just see all of these examples of individuals, not only in the Bible, right, but we, we see worldly examples as well, right, as we uh, look through society and history and, and see how men and women have fallen because they succumb to temptation. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's important for us to continue to be aware of uh, what we want to achieve in life and the process that it takes for us to get there. You know, I, temp- I think temptation is, is need is necessary. You know, my dad made this comment, and it's it's been all, always been something that has stuck with me. Uh, he said, "You should never trust someone who has never been tested." Uh, and and I think it again, it has to deal with tempering. Right, going back to the to the example of when uh, the swordsmith would temper the sword. You know, if, if I give you a sword that wasn't tempted, right, wasn't tested, and you go into battle with that sword, chances are you're not going to be successful or be victorious in that battle because uh, this, you don't know or no one knows the, the character of that steel, of that sword that you have, right? If it's going to be able to withstand a fight, if it's going to be able to withstand uh, blocking uh, uh, an attempt on your life, or even if it's going to be able to with, to withstand killing someone, right? If if it's if it becomes necessary, so so I feel like if you're if someone has not been tested, right? If they're if they have not been tempted, then they can't be trusted because they're only only individuals who have been temp- tempted or tested, and they come through that testing uh, in a positive way they develop great character, right? Those individuals that you could look at, those of indiv- are individuals that you can trust. Those are individuals that you can almost assume, right? You can almost expect uh, the actions or, or the decisions that they make, right? And those are the individuals that we want leading us, that we want serving us, that we want to serve. Um, because temp- be, to be tempted, um, I, I feel like it's the, it's the utmost level of being able to achieve success you know we all want to be successful right and you know i i i always say man you uh you you have to be careful what you confess because whatever you confess you're going to have to contest right so if you say man i you know i i i love god i i i want to serve god and you know i am I am my full self, right? I, 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 again, example with my wife. I love my wife. I, I want to uh, be faithful to her. I, I want to 
be faithful to the, the God that I serve and, and to live this word that I am speaking. That's when temptation comes, right? Temptation comes to, to test those, right? And, you know, uh, in, the, in, in the good book, it, it says, you know, whenever the kingdom is preached, uh, the, the devil comes immediately to, uh, to test, right? To test if the word has fallen on good soil. Um, and, and, and I think that uh, we, ha we must be aware of what we are confessing, what we are saying, because what we say can be contested. That's why I'm always conscious of what I say, right? If, if I am making a public proclamation or even if I'm just saying something out loud, I know that it's going to be tested. Go ahead. No, I wanted to give an example, but you can tell me if this is, you know. Yeah, go ahead. Like we have someone currently working on something for us mm -hmm. and... Like we had a conversation or you had a conversation recently with them and they were saying, you know, the devil is really tempting or testing him because every time we reach a milestone, mm -hmm. something dramatic or drastic or life threatening happens. Mm -hmm. And we see it all the time, like when we're closest to an achievement, like something happens, like you were currently editing a very good message from your dad and then your computer just mm -hmm. shuts off and never starts again. And like we both said at the same time, like I brought it up to you and you said that you also thought the same thing. I was like, this message is so powerful that someone doesn't want it to be heard. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, you see these instances every day in life where something is testing you or tempting you or like blocking you from something. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, we just have to fight through it. Yeah, I mean, I, I was gonna get to that point as mm -hmm. well, right? Because, you know, as we progress through life, um, there's, there, there's always this moment where we feel like everything is going wrong, right? Everything is, is everything that shouldn't happen, happens. Like, like, like Sharice was saying, I was editing this, uh, I was editing this, this series that my dad was, was doing. And it was a, a really powerful series. We're going to be, we're going to be releasing it very soon on our Monroe Global app. So stay out, stay on the lookout for that. But out of nowhere, my computer stopped working. Like it just, it just wouldn't cut on. Like it, it worked one night. Uh, I was editing that night, we finished editing, went to bed, woke, woke back up the next day, my computer wouldn't cut on. And it, it stopped me or delayed me in being able to edit that particular series because my computer wasn't working. And I guess it was like, man, how, how crazy is it that I haven't had any issues with this computer before? And then all of a sudden, you know, I feel through editing this particular series, um, my computer stopped working. It, it, you know, and like Cherise was saying, like this, this person who we work with, um, this, what we're working on, you know, I feel is something that could be really, could really be something special, right? Especially as we continue to build it and add to it and, you know, expand it. Um, and, you know, they were hit with some health issues. They were hit, hit with their family had some issues. Like there was a bunch of things going on. They and were literally hit. Like, and you know, it's, it's almost, almost lost his life, you know, and, uh, it, it, it's just one of those things where like you recognize that, man, what I am doing is definitely worth doing, right? It's definitely effective and it's going to be effective. And I think all of these things are happening to me to test me, to test how, not only how much I want it and how serious I am about it. But if I'm going to go through the test, um, you know, if you look at Job, right, I, I feel like the story of Job is, is similar to this, right? Job was seen as one of the, you know, the most upstanding kingdom citizens in the Bible at that time or, or in the land at that time. And, you know, Satan came to God and was like, yo, Job, you blessing Job and Job is, is serving you because of all of these blessings that you're giving him, right? I, I bet if you take everything away from him, um, you know, he's, you're, you're going to see his true colors, right? He's going to stop serving you. And God said, you know, sure, you know, everything in his possession, you have control of, but don't harm him as an individual. And I think that's what happens, right? We, we go through these, these circumstances and the, these processes in life. Uh, and we, everything around us just goes haywire, right? Like, Essentially, we may not be affected physically. Sometimes we are affected physically, but we don't, we don't come to, to death, right? We may get injured in somehow or, or you know, get sick um, health-wise, uh, but it, it's not something that, that, that is going to kill us, kill us, right? And I think that 
the reason that it happens is because we're being tested. We're being tempted uh, in that time, you know, going through a process of being tempted because whatever's on the other side of temptation is something far greater than the temptation that we go through, or it's even far greater than where we were before we were tempted. <clears throat> and with Job, right? Job had wealth. He had, you know, a, a great family, a healthy family. He had all of these riches. And then he went through this process where he lost everything. And then after he went through the process and, and came through it, you know, he was blessed, you know, seven times more than, than what he had, you know, so he was overly blessed. He was blessed even with a new family, right, with, with beautiful kids, you know, all of these things that God gave to him because he passed the test. And I think that's what I, I, I want to hit on with today are the process that we go through um, with temptation, right, the nature of temptation, it's 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 in our minds right it, it's it's our it's in our thoughts it's it's not satan coming in physically in front of us and saying hey do this or do that or don't do this and don't do that no it's these these subtle suggestions that we get in our minds to man you know you could you could take this this uh this 50 dollars you could take this 100 dollars you can sign the signature here right no one is going to no one is going to know you know you can sleep with this this young lady you can sleep with this young man no one is going to find out um, and it's, it's us being able to say no, you know, reject those, uh, those temptations to prove ourselves, right? To prove ourselves, not only to us, but to prove ourselves to God so that he can continue to bless us. Now, I, I remember when I was young, younger, um, I was a teenager at the time and I was, uh, I was tempted with, uh, the lust of the flesh. Actually, I, I guess this is lust of the eye essentially. Um, so my dad uh, used to have this, this money clip, right? And in his money clip, he used to have you know, a couple of bills because um, he always wanted, wanted to be prepared for whatever. And I, I went through this period of like just stealing like $100, $200, $300 here and there from my dad, <laughs> right? And you know, I, I, he never really paid, at least I thought he never really paid attention to it. Um, because, you know, it'll be a couple, a few hundred dollars there in the roll. So it wouldn't be like, you know, at least I didn't think like he would count out and, and know what he has. Um, but you know, after I, I would say this maybe happened for a couple of months, maybe even a year, to be honest. And, you know, I would be taking money for like, you know, buying some sneakers or going to the movies or like just doing something that I, I wanted, needed money for or whatnot. And, you know, Eventually, he kind of, I can't remember how he found out, but he found out that I was stealing money from him. And we had a conversation. And he was like, yo, wh why are you, like, what's the purpose of you stealing, right? What, what is stealing going to do for you, right? Because you're going to steal, I'm going to find out, then I'm going to get upset, and I'm not going to, like, be as generous as I could or should be to you, right? As opposed to you just coming to me and asking for what it is that you want. And I thought about it and I was like, man, that's, that's right. Like I had no reason to steal, right? Because even if my dad said no when I asked him for money, uh, it, it, it would have been for a purpose. It would have been for a reason. And then on top of that, like I could have just, you know, figured out how to make money or get the money a different way, whether it's through the job I was working in the summers or, you know, whatever, just whatever, whatever the case is, right? It could have been a, a better way to, to get that money. And, you know, that was a lesson that I went through because I, it was just, I, I started to realize that, man, this decision that I was making was just dumb. And it started with a, with a thought. It started with me seeing the water cash, the, the money clip, uh, my dad's drawer, and just being, hmm, I, I could take a couple of dollars. I don't think my dad could miss this. And, you know, just realizing that, man, that wasn't the best decision because then, you know, I had to go through the process of my dad not be, not being able to trust me, and I, I don't I don't think we ever got to that point. But that's 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 a response, right? That's a response to when you steal, you can't be trusted, and you have to either build back up to a, a, a level of trust with the individual, the organization, or whoever it is that you stole from, or you don't get that opportunity anymore. Um, that's something that you uh, no longer have. Do we all have a stealing story? Because I I'm pretty sure we do. <laughs> because my uncle had like he used to save coins and like just dollar bills, and every time I would be by him, I'd be like, hmm, let me help myself. <laughs> just take, take and I just, dollars. you know, and 
he wouldn't miss it. So I'm like, well, am I really doing something <laughs> wrong? But I feel like a lot of kids, uh, you know, young people, they kind of do it. So yeah. I don't and know. I think that's why, like, my, my dad really, like, wasn't upset. Like, we literally just had a conversation about it. He, and I, maybe because he knew that I was, like, that type of person. That, like, I'm a thinker. I'm a rational thinker. And I just needed reason, right? Good reason to be like, okay, that makes sense. Um, and it, it just changed my perspective on our relationship from that from that aspect, right? Not having to steal, not wanting to steal, because you know my dad gave me access, and if I if it was something that I really needed, like he would provide it for me. Um, but it, it's just you know, the, like I said, the loss of the eye, like seeing something and being like, man, I want that. I'm just going to take it because I don't think anyone's going to find out. And you know, more times than not, like what we do when we don't think anyone is looking. Is, is is somehow some way one day gonna come to light and you know i think we need to be aware of these choices and these decisions that we're making behind closed doors because that's where we're tempted right we're not we're not always tempted out in the open right sometimes it happens but a lot of the times the temptation happens in in those secret places right in our in our homes right and behind uh behind closed doors where no one can see so yeah there's this quote i can't really remember how it goes but it's a saying that says you are who you are when no one is watching mm -hmm. so it's it's more of what you do in secret mm -hmm. or like who you are when no one's watching versus when people are watching and you can put on and put this fake persona on. yeah because you're building character right mm -hmm. like i said like as as we go through these tempting phases uh, it builds our character and it, and it creates trust it creates a level of trust between us and the individuals who see us being tested see us being tempted right because they're like man that person had the opportunity to do this and they didn't they didn't go this route uh i can trust this person and, and that's how that's how trust is built right and the only way that we can build trust is going through test um and like i said my my dad always said you should never trust someone that has never been tested uh, so i i you know i want to challenge everyone out there um Go through the test, uh, be aware of when the test is presenting itself. Uh, understand that the thoughts that you have, they aren't evil thoughts, right? They're, you're just being tested, you're being tempted. And when you're, when, when you're doing something or when you're going through uh, an activity, uh, you're, you're running a business, <clears throat> you're, you're doing something that is, is going to be productive to those around you, and you go through these trying times, right? You go through these times where it just doesn't make sense why things are happening. Just be aware that you're being tested, right? You're going through the tempting process. Um, and I want to, I, I, I challenge you to, to just to push through it, right? To make, to make those right decisions, to make those sound decisions, right? Understand that, man, the choices that I make, you know, my, my, and this is something else my dad always taught me, right? The choices I make today doesn't only affect me today but it affects me in the future and it affects my family and all of those around me. So as you go through life, as these, these, temp these tempting times uh, come up, as they appear, you know, as, they, uh, as you're uh, confronted with them, uh, just before you make your decision, just ask yourself, man, how is this going to affect me 10 years from now? How is this going to affect me and my kids and my family 10 years from now? How is this going to affect my business uh, my employees, those people that I lead, how is this going to affect them 10 years from now? Uh, and I think if you use that as your sounding board, more times than not, you're going to make the right decision. And as always, when in doubt, always do what is right. You know, I, I think uh, we're, we're, no one is immune or, or, or um, void of temptation. We're all going to be tempted, right? We're all going to be tested and testing builds us right it builds our character it allows us to develop into the strong individual the trusted individual that that we are were created to be um and i think as we continue to remain conscious of these tempting times uh you know and just be aware of the process of tempting right we're going to be tempted with the lust of the flesh we're going to be tempted with the lust of the eyes and then we're going to be tempted with the pride of life. Um, if we can pull through and push through all of these categories of temptation, it's going to build us to be well-trusted, 
to be more successful and to be more influential than we can ever dream of. All right. So this brings us to the portion of the part where I leave with you a milestone. And today's milestone is simply in all temptation. Consider not what we are offered, but what we could lose. So when you're tempted, when you're going through these tempting times, don't consider what the offer is, whether it's money, whether it's sex, whether it's the pleasures of life, whether it's uh, being, uh, being able to be praised and, and celebrated by the masses. But think of, of what it is that you're losing. Are you losing yourself? Are you losing your integrity? Are you losing morals, your ethics? Are you losing, could, could you lose your family? What is it that you're going to lose? Um, and I think if we look at it and flip it, flip it to that perspective, um, hopefully we could make the right decision. All right. So that brings us to the end of this part. Um, you know, I again, I challenge you to always be uh, aware of the test. Right. And my encouragement to you and my prayer for you is that every test that you go through, you pass with flying colors. All right. As always. The vision and goal of this podcast is to entertain, educate, and elevate you miles high above your fears, your doubts, and any limitations that you may think exist, always knowing that those limitations only exist in your mind. All right, until next time, you guys stay blessed.